Well, folks, welcome to one more edition of Politics and Rhetoric. Berto is your host. Thank you so kind for being part of the show. We are going to have a great show for you today. It's, a, it's going to be an interesting show with the clips that I have to show you today. Now, uh, before I get started, I want to welcome everybody into the house. El Señor Bruce Pollard said, I'm here today. Welcome, Bruce Pollard. We also have Lee Grant. Uh, Bruce is from Kingwood. Uh, we also have Lee Grant from Montgomery County in the house. May Wood from Long Beach, California in the house. There will be an Ask Egberto on Friday. Uh, or not on Friday, on Saturday. Thank you very much. Ask Egberto on Saturday at regular time, 11 Central Standard. Paul Fleming from Atlanta, Georgia is in the house with us. We also have Michael Rudnan in the house with us uh, out of Brooklyn, New York. We also have Mike Cisak with us out of Kentucky, I believe, or no, Missouri, I believe. We also have, uh, let's see who else is with us that I am missing. If I miss you, Eric Hayes is in the house uh, from uh, Atascosita, Kingwood. So we are all well represented from the East Coast to the West Coast to the middle of the country all represented so we'll say represent that's what we're saying represent anyway folks uh the telephone number is 281-823-7747 i would love to hear from some of you today 281-823-7747 sorry that i am a bit late but you know uh getting this program together today was difficult first of all i had a power fail we were out of power for about two and a half hours somewhere around there and that kind of put us behind in getting all the preparations done with clap, uh, cutting the videos and all of that. Uh, so that's the excuse. And backup power didn't work because, again, I haven't really set up all the backup power other than the battery power. And when you're doing heavy graphic processing, uh, your graphic card starts to work pretty, pretty darn hard. And when your graphic cards start to work pretty damn hard, it is hard on the backup batteries. So uh, that is one of the reasons why I don't even, while I'm doing that, I don't even bother to go ahead and try graphic processing. Becomes It becomes a difficult task with the amount of energy that it pulls as it's computing and clipping and doing all those stuff with Adobe. If you take a, in fact, if you go ahead and take a, put, put a, a, a meter on how much power you're drawn when the graphics meters are going, you would be surprised. I know I did that several times and it, it was just surprising the amount of uh, graphic power that the system uses. But anyway, we're going to have a great show. As you can see right now, I'm still, uh, I'm, I'm still filling out a few, uh, a few items here before we get started, like sort of like officially, but we'll be there in a minute as I post these things in a, a few places. So bear with me as I get this. It's one person guy, one person doing all the production, producing and everything else. So, uh, it, it is not the easiest task as you multitask, get all of this done. So bear with me. I'm going to semi-publish this guy here. Estamos listo para comenzar ahora. We're ready to go. How are my peeps doing? Let's see if anybody else got into the chat. Uh, okay, let's go ahead and start reading some of what you guys are saying here. Donald uh, from Paul Fleming. A Donald Trump fanatic who assaulted officers with pepper spray and called for additional violence after the Capitol attack while confessing in the third person has been sentenced to more than five years in federal prison and fined $200,000. Good for him. Uh, Paul Fleming says an attorney discipline judge in uh, California has rejected a request from ex-Trump ex election lawyer John Eastman to reactivate his law license following he, her recent recommendation that he be disbarred, which rendered him unable to practice law for now. He shouldn't be able to practice after Lawley tried to overthrow the United States government. Uh, you know, when you protest, even if you think you're right, you all may have to realize that you're going to suffer the consequences of your protest. Paul Fleming says, Scott Sheffield, 
the founder and longtime CEO of a leading American oil produ uh, producer, attempted to collude with OPEC and its allies to inflate prices, federal regulation alleged on Thursday. These guys, like I've constantly told you, are thugs, Steve's. And, you know, when, when we have somebody go into a grocery store or a, a convenience store and steal a cigarette or a soda and run out of it, we want to have, we want them shot. We want them taken care of, of the law and order. But using capitalism and, and our form of economics, we raid people's monies. We take away people's future. We take away people's savings, people's retirement. But we don't call that stealing. We call it capitalism, whatever the market will bear. There are better ways, folks. There are better ways. So um, thanks for bringing that, Paul Fleming. Uh, let's see. Uh, Michael Radin says, replying to Paul Fleming, ah, found it. NBC News just said the domestic terrorist said, this is a second effing revolution. If you voted for effing treason, we're going to drag your effing uh, A through the streets. Judge said he made very vigorous comments on tape about his desire for future violence. Lee Grant says, wokeness is eating itself on our campus. No, protest is eating ourselves on campus. And I love it. I love it. It is supposed to make people uncomfortable. It is supposed to do that. When we fought, it, when we when we protested at the University of Texas in Austin for uh, the liberation of uh, for the uh, for the University of Texas to divest from South Africa and apartheid state, uh, where where Reagan did the same thing with that government. He wanted constructive engagement, but when we talk about other countries, we just send bombs. But for uh, folks that are on our side, supposedly maltreating people, killing people. We want co to constructively engage them, to ask them not to treat those people so badly. Maybe it's because of our history of treating people badly and not wanting our, not wanting others to tell our country how to treat its slaves, how to treat its Chinese indentured servants, and etc., 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 etc. You know, sometimes you have to be careful. Right. Anyhow, continuing. Mike C. Sack says Bruce Pollard is true. All the leftists in the country are acting like fascists. That's a joke. Uh, Bruce Pollard says, my friend, mine, 75 crypto coins with two hundred fifty dollars of uh, of uh, GPU power, which are now worth one thousand five hundred each. There are a limited amount of crypto coins. How did he get uh, to find seventy five crypto coins? I don't know how he found 75 crypto coins. That's amazing. When when did he mine it? Let me hear about that, Bruce. When did he mine it? All right, let's see. Michael Rodden says, Mike C. demonstrating he doesn't know basic terms. Fascists are for right. Communists are for left. If you're going to make broad, sweet political takes, at least get the terminology right. Lee Grant says, leftists left a big reporting that the vast majority of cop uh, campus protesters aren't even students. That is a false statement. But again, we know what the mainstream media is doing. Uh, Bruce says, I hate to admit I ran my fairly in a more fascist way than I meant to. I admit I ran my daily in a more fascist than I Now it's too late, but my kids uh, is them to be doing better. Their kids are not yet 10. I ran my, I kind of missed something there, Bruce. Uh, but anyway, he started four years ago. All right. Anyway, folks, let's start with the first video. The first video is an evangelical pastor. The evangelical pastor has some messages. Check this out, and then we'll take it on the other side. It's an evangelical pastor delivering a forceful sermon, denouncing what's become known as the Trump Bible as blasphemous and disgusting. So in March, Trump, as you know, began selling a $60 God bless the USA Bible complete with copies of the nation's founding documents. The April 14th sermon by Reverend Lauren Livingston, senior pastor of Central Church in Charlotte, North Carolina, has gone viral drawing millions of views so far. Take a when look. When you don't read and pray, you, you say, wow, there's a Bible out now that includes the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. Isn't that wonderful? No, no, it's disgusting. It's blasphemous. 
It's a ploy. Are you kidding me? Some of you are so encouraged by that. Let me tell you something. The gospel is not an American gospel. It is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. But pastor, I bought the Bible. Really? You're telling me that you're encouraged because someone took a government U.S. Constitution, a document that says we are of the people, by the people, and for the people, the people, the people, the people. And you have put it right beside the word of God, which is eternal, unchanging, which says of him, by him, through him, to him, from him are all things. And you're going to put those together and be happy about it? God forbid. Now, you can get mad if you want to, but I'm going to tell you something. If you glory in that kind of thing, you don't have a prayer life. If you glory in that kind of mess, political mess, you do not know what the word of God says. Let's bring in right now Russell Moore. He's the editor-in-chief at Christianity Today and leads its public theology project. We also have still with us David French. And, and, you know, Russell, uh, before anybody gets confused, this gentleman is not going to be a Democratic delegate to the Chicago nope. uh, Democratic Convention. Uh, he, his positions on abortion, on LBGTQ mm-hmm. issues, on many other issues uh, would not come close to fitting uh, what the Democratic Party's message would be on those issues or beliefs. That said, that actually makes that a more stinging indictment among Republican evangelicals, I think, what he just said. Ta- take us through what he just said and how how it aligns with so much of what um, you believe and David and I believe. Well, what he said shouldn't be uh, con- controversial or even remarkable at all. It was an old fashioned uh, sermon against idolatry. Uh, it's the fact that we're living in such strange times that we even take uh, take notice of this. What I notice about this man is he's not scared. Uh, I don't know him. I've, I've never heard him before. But there are so many people who are scared of their audiences that they're mm-hmm. afraid of what's going to happen. And I guarantee you that this guy was being stopped in the foyer or on the way out of the church to say, how dare you criticize uh, Donald Trump? But he's, he's recognizing that what's happening here is the politicizing of religion in a way that's not just destroying our politics, but also destroying our, our religion. Oh, e- even the golden calf didn't charge admission. And we have now people who are selling products to us uh, with our own sacred texts, mixing them together in some sort of a, a political marketing campaign. That that is doing something really sick. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead. Number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join. Absolutely. Join our movement. Join our movement. Uh, let's see. Let, let me go back to the uh, people. But before that, I want to handle my good friend, uh, Lee Grant. He said, stay tuned for Christian bashing. No, uh, that wasn't Christian bashing. That, in fact, all the things that I'm going to do about religion today has to do with finally some Christians stepping up to say, let's stop you, let's stop being a false prophet. Donald Trump as a false prophet as he tries to unite the Bible and the Constitution. Many of people are talking against it. Good Christians are talking about the evil of Christ, not Christian nationalists, the evil of the merging of the Republican Party and Christi- and false Christianity. And who is doing that, folks? These are Republicans or former Republicans or Republicans speaking up or just good Christians speaking up about the evil that is emanating, that is metastasizing throughout the country. I have more of it to, to, to play for you, but let's go ahead and go back to my wonderful people in the chat. And uh, what we have here is 
wokeness itself is eating our campuses. No, just good protests and we need to keep up. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Uh, Lee Grant says, leftists left a big mess at UCLA. Taxpayers have to clean it up. Let's remember that we had right-wing folks come in and threw uh, fire bombs, meaning uh, fireworks, into the crowd at into the into the, the ca- encampments. Think about that. The encampments were peaceful, and the right wingers threw what again? Uh, fire sticks, uh, uh, fireworks into that place. Could have hurt somebody when they did that. That wasn't the so. But you don't hear that, right? Mike C. Sexes, police are reporting that the vast majority of campus protesters aren't even students. First of all, that's a false report. Most of the people on campus, in fact, are students. They've been what what the plutocracy is trying to do is start to put a message out there that somehow these students are being co-opted by terrorists so that they can then use underhanded methods of going into these campuses, etc., under national security. It's a neoliberal cap, it's an it's neoliberal BS both on the Republican side and partially on the new liberal sect of the Democratic Party as well. No, 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 no. These kids are doing what they're supposed to do as good United States citizens. Michael Rodden says, Mike, see, you finally figured it out. Outside agitators infiltrating protests are a problem. <laughs> good catch, Michael Rodden. Good catch. Good catch. Enjoy your crypto gambling. It is gambling, and you know what? It fall. I mean, it, it's just like the stock market. The stock market is gambling. Crypto is gambling. Now, let me just tell you that crypto, uh, crypto, and uh, and the stock market—they're all in one the same. Okay. Uh, one. The only difference is that crypto uses a hell of a lot more energy to mine, to mine these cryptos by you know force feed in numbers until they find the, the next until they mine the next thing and it gets validated by the blockchain. But look, that's not the issue here. Um you know I sat down one time and I figured, hey, maybe I should just go ahead and get some servers and start and just start running the sucker and see how many cryptos I can find out. But you know, uh at fifteen hundred dollars times ten, let's say fifteen hundred ten would be fifteen thousand 15,000 times so Oh, he made a few hundred thousand dollars there, Bruce. Not bad. Or close to a couple hundred thousand or so. All right. Uh, Paul Fleming says, I, I must see. It's the kind of thing you might expect to come out of Russia. Instead, it came out of Phoenix or specifically Hoffman's secret self-paid teenage trolls. Uh, I don't know what that is, but let me let me say that just when you thought Arizona Republican Party getting crazier, the Arizona Republican Party first elected indicted Senator Jake Hoffman. Uh, let's see. Uh, Jake Huff and expel representative Liz Harris to represent Arizona on the air. Could this party get any more nuts? So, uh, well, you know, let's see what happens in November. I think they all fail in November, but we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Mike Cisak says fascists are leftists. Fascists are for using government control to control business while leaving such in private ownership. That's false. You can go ahead and see what, uh, well, you know, again, uh, it's not worth discussing that because you fail to actually uh, use your uh, intuitive mind to use your calculative mind. I can't help you there. But for those who are willing to, let me just remind you that what we establish is that uh, business is not business forms a part of the economy. And as such, just like people, we formed a government and we form a government to socialize us all to make us social beings working together. And we decide how much, uh, and we ceded, we the people ceded certain liberties for a better society. It, nobody wants to say that, but anarchy doesn't work. And what uh, conservatives claim that they want doesn't work. They still use our streets. They still use our social security. They still use all the things that they that they fight against if we were to follow their policies. Their policies are mentally unstable and fiscally uh, incalculably. Uh, <laughs> on, it's not mathematic. So let's just mathematical. So let's just let's just leave it there.
All right, let's continue. Melanie Keelan is in the house from Barcelona, Spain. How are you doing, our beautiful Melanie Keelan? We also have Michael Rudden, who says, Eric, all of the cable news networks have aging demographics. Check the average viewer age. You might see this so temporary. And that's true. Uh, the, the, most people get their news now. Most of the younger folks, uh, millennials and below, get most of their news online from uh, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, uh, Snapchat, uh, speaking among people, work groups, Reddit. All these are forms of communication. It is a democratization of communication. Some people don't like that because there's a lot of misinformation that can get in there. But you know what? When you have misinformation into that space, it can easily be, uh, it can easy, you know, you can get this, the, the crowd sourced into fix. But when you get misinformation from the New York Times or the Washington Post or the or the or, or the Fox News or whatever, because it is so centralized, it has that much more oomph. I love decentralized news that's corrobor- corrobor- that we can corroborate. I love that. All right. Uh, let's see. Every case says, guess what was shut down first during pandemic? Churches attack on religion. That's a joke. Uh, the, what was shut down is wherever people congregate. You, you see how I, I want to show you how what uh, how the right wing spins things. Right when the pandemic came about, we understood that the pandemic could be transmitted through the air where people congregate. What do the right wing goes ahead go out there and tell you? Oh, they shut down the churches. No. They shut down everything where many people congregate together in close quarters because that's how the disease spreads. And the churches is one of the major places where people congregate together outside of employment. Now, a a mind that's not thinking is easily convinced when you know when when you live and see that your church is no longer meeting. And somebody said, oh, you see, the government shut down your church. No, the government says in order not to transmit these diseases, all organizations and places where many people meet, you shouldn't meet. Why not? Because you spread the disease, but they turn it into a conspiracy. And you that can only work with a weak mind and not a scientific mind, a weak mind. All right, Bruce Call says, let's not assign left and right to the campus demonstrators. Um, you know, we shouldn't, but in this case, in, in UCLA, we had the supporters of Netanyahu who went ahead and did just that. And the supporters of Netanyahu are, in fact, right wing. But then again, a lot of the people in that crowd probably are considered conservative. So I think you make your point, and your point is well taken, brother Bruce Pollard. So, yeah, I think you're right there. Absolutely. You're right there. You're right there. There are conservatives in those protests. You're absolutely right about that. God, you're right about that. Um, and you have Jewish students and everybody else in there. So you're absolutely right. Uh, Eric has says, break it into buildings and violence is not to be tolerated. Arrest and persecution are accountable. I hope that's what you thought about those people breaking the doors and killing cops in during the protests on January 6th. But generally speaking, you guys have two different forms of, yeah, you know. All right. uh, Let's see what else we got. Lee Grant says, woke is uber permissive. They have created this monster. All right. Let's compare what's happening on campus and what happened on January 6th. Who created a monster again? Who created a monster? How many people died on these campus peaceful protests? And how many people died on Jan 6th? You uh, rest my case. All right. uh, Let's see. Uh, Michael says, Eric, during the pandemic, those churches and synagogues that didn't enforce wearing masks had super spreader events. Airborne viruses don't respect holy ground. And, and it turns out, in effect, those pastors who did that, I would call them murderers. I would put them in. I, I would actually calculate the damage that they've done and throw the, throw the book at them. It's that simple. All right. Let's see what else. Paul Femme says, imagine if police use the same force against men and women attacking a capital as they do college kids protesting a war. You know, we had one of our regular callers, uh, uh, M- Melissa, pointed that out, that the police were, while they were kind of there, the treatment against the right wing is never the same as the way they crack skulls for people on the left. It's just amazing. It's just amazing. 
Uh, let's see. Uh, going down, uh, para ver, para ver. they didn't shut down George Floyd protests. Uh, okay, let's, let's, let's remember what this was all about. Let's get it clear. Where people congregate in closed spaces, because it was also verified that, the, that where there is a lot of circulation on the outdoors, we're talking about something different than on the indoor. Come on, folks. Come on, Lee Grant. You're better than that. We have minds, brother. Come on, my brother. You're a smart dude. Protests are on the outside. Open air. Churches are enclosed, recirculating of viruses. Even though some people doing their protests did get sick, just not on the same order. All right. Let's see what else we got here. Politico, Robert F. Kennedy, increasingly frequent appearance in conservative media platforms are beginning to raise alarms at mar lago Yet another sign of the rising threat that the independent presidential uh, candidate poses to Trump. Yep, he does. I think, I think what uh, uh, Kennedy is going to turn out to be is the following. It's uh, the people that just can't stomach voting for Trump, but they will never vote for a Democrat can stick it to they, they, they would look at it as sticking it to both the Dems and Trump. The thing about it is if those people are voting, since they're likely to have a, a, a bias towards Trump, it actually likely helps. Uh, it likely helps otherwise. All right, let's go ahead and take this call. Theodore, uh, how are you doing today, my friend? Wow. Thought you right on there. Hey, I was calling uh, because... Uh, I want somebody to help me out here. Um, you know, uh, I uh, I vote Democrat because I'm I believe that everyone should be treated pretty much equally. That you know, uh, homosexuals and women, and I, I'm a you know I'm a I'm a straight wasp. So uh, so I guess technically I don't exist, but um, I'm a Democrat. And technically, uh, you know. Oh, oh, oh. Wait, my brother, my brother, my brother. Technically, you don't exist. Why? Because I'm a white Anglo-Saxon Protestant with military experience from the South, and I've been. Uh huh. Okay, so, yeah, so I, let me, wait, brother, 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 brother. According brother. to the polls, no, nope, According brother. to the polls, I did. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I don't see why. I don't see. No, 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 sir, sir. Let's. Uh, I, I, I know where you're coming from. Okay. And that is a that is a such a false narrative that have been placed on white men. It is a calculated thing to make white men believe that somehow they're becoming irrelevant with all these other identities that are coming out today. So I want to use what you just said before you move on. I want you to keep talking. But before you move on, I do want to tell you, first of all, that it's a false narrative that is easy to put out there. But if you take a look at all the positions in our society today, it is and continues to be and likely will continue to be for the very foreseeable future, dominated, in fact, by white men from the from leaders of corporations to the leaders of unions to the leaders of just about anything. So uh, let's go by the numbers and don't follow what uh, uh, false prophets would like you to believe. But that said, Please continue, my brother. <laughs> okay. I'm, all right. I, I meant to be a, just a throwaway joke, but okay. No, my, um, so like I say, I'm, I'm, I'm considering myself pretty liberal, pretty progressive. And yet, uh, and, uh, the Palestinians seem to be contrary to all that. Um, mm -hmm. I've lived in Islamic societies and, uh, I, uh, and then uh, I understand that the first thing that Hamas did when they took power was to round up all the, the men that they thought were gay and throw them off a 10-story building. Uh, and, of course, the way they treat women is pretty horrendous. Um, I, I don't think they're backwards enough that they do the uh, female um, uh Mutilation, circumcision, but mm -hmm. yeah, but and then, um, and then, then all these kids that are you know more uh, progressive than me are are all demonstrating for these people that have these values that seem 
antithetical to everything that we hold dear, mm -hmm. those of us on the left side of the spectrum. Okay. And uh, so it's quite confusing to me. I think Biden's handling it about right. Mm -hmm. I don't. I, I don't think the, the Israelis should be defenseless, but okay. um, and I don't think they should starve innocent people. So I don't think they should be starved. But they just hate Biden for you know allowing Israel to defend themselves. So can you may I respond? To may I respond? And let me let me respond in several ways. First yeah, of all, I'm sorry, I. No, this is your show as well, sir, and I'm I'm happy to have you, and I thank you for calling. Uh, first, let me tell you that uh, I don't particularly like Biden for many other reasons, because I think he's a neoliberal, but I am voting for Biden. I'm, I'm advising everybody to vote for Biden, because Biden is someone who, based on the policies he has passed thus far, has been much better for the progressive movement, even better so. Uh, uh, notwithstanding Obamacare better than Obama with progressive policies that he passed during the first year. Okay. So that said, um, I am, I'm, I'm very intellectually honest in what I'm going to tell you here. Uh, yeah, I've been the, surprised at Biden. I, I thought he was a lot, a much better president than I expected. Yes. I, I agree with you 100% on that regards. Now that said, my brother, here's the thing. Okay. There are several issues with uh, Israel and Palestine, and what many would like to do is conflate them. Uh, the issue is we have an Israel that is, and I'm talking about the right-wing government in Israel. I am not anti-Semitic. In fact, a lot of Jewish brothers and sisters are in this movement uh, condemning what Israel is doing right now. Right. Uh, okay, I got you. Let's remember this. I Israel. Uh, I'm, not, ahead, I'm, I'm not accusing you of being anti-Semitic. No, on. but I, 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 it's not about you. It's also about our larger audience that I want to make sure understand that there is that we, we are talking simply on numbers, etc. Now, let's let's recall a few things. Netanyahu has spent a lot of times trying to prevent a two state solution. And in so doing, what he did is he left his bottom flank open. He continued to work on building, uh, building uh, uh, out, outposts in, in the West Bank, and he left the, his flank, where a lot of progressive Jews live, to be under attack by Hamas. He also green-lighted other Arab countries to fund Hamas because he wanted a strong Hamas relative to a uh, the 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 um the the PRD or the you know the the, the other the other I forgot okay, what they're we agree Netanyahu is an idiot yeah I, okay but a, so let so I, let I so great let's, so let's continue let's continue now there there are simple solutions here mm -hmm. right number one uh, Netanyahu should not have gone in and bombed the smithereens out of Gaza. That is a war crime, what he did by annihilating buildings, infrastructure, schools, and everything else. That was a war crime under the terms of trying to go find the terrorists. What he did is he created a yeah, lot of Biden terrorists. Biden overkill, right. Right. And, and right. what I'm Biden, saying, yeah. the, the protests mean, that we're doing he, here, he, let me tell you what <laughs> the protest is about. The protest that we are doing here now is saying to Biden, stop him. Biden has the power to tell Netanyahu you will not, and he should have said you will not go into Gaza. You will not do any of these because your state only exists under the tutelage of the United States. Punto y final. There, uh, there is no Israel without the support that the United States provides. And at this point in time, he has endangered you and me by what he is doing in Gaza, because now it's open season on terrorism again on American citizens. You are absolutely correct when you talk about how some Palestinian clerics, etc., think about homosexuals, women, or whatever. But I always look at people and tell them it's not a black and white issue. Let's remember a few things. America is yet to uh, elect a, a woman president. These other countries, Muslim countries, have. Let's get. Uh, let's understand that things are not black and white. We have a lot of problems with these issues, just like 
they have a lot of problems with these issues. But one of the problems that we should have is the destruction of infrastructure, the destruction of people's lives, the killing and maiming of women and children. I think that is a war crime that needs to be mitigated and we do not need to be complicit. Starvation, sure. Starvation. Yeah. And I think, my brother, I think what these students are doing is heroic. And let me tell you better. I Back in, in the 1980s, I was a part of the uh, Divest from South Africa movement that got the same response minus the police action, but got the same response. And it turned out we were right. These kids are going to turn out being right. And uh, Anand Hirad Hiradas was on Morning Joe. And I did a piece on it. If you can go to politicsunright.com slash newsletter and go to that video that I did this morning on my KPFT show, it shows you some of the complexities of this issue and that let's give these kids the latitude. They are actually right. Anything else, my brother, before we move on with the program? Um, no, I appreciate uh, appreciate you discussing it with me. Um, incidentally, I, I do use you as an example sometimes when I get in the conversations because you I believe you once said that you've been offered money to to uh, run yes. a show from a right wing point of view. Yes, m- yeah. more than once, many yeah. times. Yeah, yeah, I've. Uh, I brought that up in a couple of arguments. Okay, I wanted to just make sure that. Well, all right. Yeah. Well, uh, well, brother, thank brother, you for let me. Your, uh, thank you for thank your you, time, sir. And thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk about this because I think it's important for other people to hear this as well. So thank you so kindly. Hmm. Okay. Have right. a great day. Bye bye. All right, folks. Uh, as you can see, that was Theodore. I appreciate the call. Anyway, let me go ahead and continue. Oops, I got into a little trouble here. Let me close that window. Window closed. All right. uh, Let's see what else we got here. Uh, Coming down, scrolling down, scrolling down. I got some more videos to play, but I want to go ahead and uh, let's see here. See if there's anything else I need to address before I jump on to the other video. Okay. The other video that I want to play is, uh, you know, we have a... A, a state representative uh, from Texas. And I could not be more proud of this state representative. I think he would be considered a millennial. Uh, he is in our state legislature and he has a good take on Christian politicians and more. I want you to listen to this and then we will take it on the other side. The Bible doesn't mention abortion, or gay marriage, but it goes on and on about forgiving debt, liberating the poor, and healing the sick. Christian nationalists like to say this is a Christian nation. Not only is that historically inaccurate, not only is that theologically blasphemous, but it's also just not true. Look around us. If this was truly a Christian nation, we would forgive student debt. If this was truly a Christian nation, we would guarantee health care to every single person. If this was truly a Christian nation, we would love all of our LGBTQ neighbors. If this was truly a Christian nation, we would make sure every child in this state and in this country was housed, fed, clothed, educated, and insured. If this was truly a Christian nation, we would never make it a Christian nation because we know the table of fellowship is open to everybody, including our Buddhist Hindu, Jewish, Muslim, Sikh, and atheist neighbors. Jesus could have started a Christian theocracy, but love would never do that. The closest thing we have to the kingdom of heaven is a multiracial, multicultural democracy where power is truly shared among all people, something that's yet to exist in human history. That is State Representative James Talarico. Uh, I, he represents, I think, the Round Rock area, a certain part, uh, Boot, or, you know, I mean, again, when I heard that TikTok from the brother, I had to say, he is the example of what Texas should be. He is the example of what the rest of the country's politicians should be. And you know what? There are several things about him. 
He's young, he's articulate, and he's fearless. And if we can mint, and it's a lot of young people doing this kind of stuff, if we can mint more like Mr. Talarico, if we can mint more young people, and you know what? I see them. I, I see them on those campuses that are, 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 are showing that they have morals, that they care about people, that they have empathy. As he did not allow, he went to the same university that I went to, the University of Texas. And it, 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 has, it has the culture. It creates the culture of caring, of empathy. And more politicians like him is what we need. And I think more politicians like him as younger people come into the fold is what we'll get. It's about holding on, holding on, marking space until we get the next generation in and get rid of the cancer that many in the older generation have represented for too long. Anyway, folks, I got uh, another one that I need to share with you. Uh, This is a Jewish professor from Columbia University. And while the mainstream media is making you believe that uh, that the Jewish people are under, Jewish students are under assault on campuses, we're not saying that anti Semitism isn't true. We're not saying that some of these Jewish students have gotten involved in anti Semitic behavior from some knuckleheads or otherwise. But the movement itself, the protests themselves, have nothing to do with anti-Semitism, have nothing to do with intimidating folks. And in fact, many Jews form a part of this movement. Listen to what the professor has to say, and then we'll take it on the other side. Professor, just uh, your thoughts on it, and maybe just a broader conversation about freedom of speech, freedom from intimidation. Uh, We have seen pictures and videos of chants inside the Columbia University campus uh, that many would consider anti-Semitic, racist, and hateful. Where do you think, Professor? Oh, you all right? I'm sorry. It was a phone call. I just had to hang up. Okay, that's all right. Live TV is uh, is has everything, and I just want your thoughts, if you would, about about freedom of expression, freedom from intimidation. Uh, some pictures that we have seen from inside that encampment show signs and some chants that many would consider offensive, intimidating, anti-Semitic. Where do you think, Professor, the line should be between free speech? And the freedom to protest and intimidation, lack of respect for others' perspectives, opinions, or even religion. Yeah, um, you pose a very, very complicated question. I recognize that it is a complicated question. Uh, I think intimidation is a very strong word. And much of what has been called intimidation, uh, the sorts of things that uh, have been called in question as um, endangering the safety of Jewish students. I mean, I, I say this as a Jew uh, on campus. It's really been a matter of making people feel uncomfortable rather than intimidating or in any way threatening people. In in in, in it, yeah, it hasn't really been threatening. I'm sorry, the words are failing me. Um, so yes, it's a genuine question. Um, what I have thought, and I've said a couple of other times before, is that uh, universities have the right, even an obligation, to create speech codes and to sustain speech codes on campus, which are different from what is constitutionally available outside campus in the United States. So, for example, I do not think that genocidal uh, discourse should be permissible on campus because that would genuinely be intimidating for anybody targeted by that um, that discourse. Uh, but when I say that, when I feel it, and I do feel it as somebody who has been verbally and physically assaulted by anti-Semites, I just don't think there has been 
any genocidal talk uh, at this encampment. I realized, all right, the exception would be the one thing that everybody has heard about, the young, um, the young man who said he wanted to, that Zionists didn't have the right to live. He said this right. three months before the encampment. He apologized for it afterwards. It was, it, it was not representative of the things that I have heard in the encampment. And, and that's what, something that I've been saying for quite a while now. The mainstream media has been using the exception to paste it onto the rest of the movement. It's the same thing the media does consistently many a times with minorities in the way they talk about crime, with minorities in the way they talk about debt. Even as when we had the explosion, uh, the, the, 20, the, 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 uh, November, uh, the 2008 meltdown, as opposed to blaming the bankers that were heeding us in the way they did things, in the way they, they, they cheated, they try to make it look like, oh, look at all these people who took out loans that they couldn't afford. The bankers were complicit. They were forcing loans onto people. They were telling, hey, you can get this. You can do this. You can, you know, take these easy loans and no interest rate. And then uh, we have it balloons at the end of the pay. Look, it is a, it's a constancy. And that is what the mainstream media is doing with the movement right this minute and this professor blows a hole into it saying i am on there and i see what's happening just like mark thompson spent a whole lot of time on campus uh, a, a journalist that is to point out this wasn't the case just like uh, uh, antonia hilton another great journalist from uh from nbc went out there spent some actual time and realized that none of what's being said about these protests have any credulity, just like what we had Anan Kirad Hirada saying, just like what we had uh, Mara, Mara Gay talking about. We have to get honest reporting, not corporate driven reporting to, 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 to manufacture a particular thought in the mindsets of people. Great, Professor. Thank you. I have one more video that I need to show, and this one has to do with the numbers. The numbers, the politicians, the, the evangelical Christian politicians, the Christian nationalists out there that are constantly pointing their fingers at others as far as, oh, these trends are going to do this to your kids. Oh, these uh, progressives are degenerate, etc. Well, the numbers continue to prove one thing, that these guys, these Christian nationalists, these evangelical pastors, etc., all they are doing is projecting their own moral deficiencies. Check this out, and then we'll take it on the other side. For more than a year now, I've been tracking cases of people who have made the news for their sexual assaults on children. And with 9,728 cases in the database since February of last year, and with more than a week of reports still to categorize, here's a quick update. And remember, this is raw data, so if you don't like it, complain to the criminals, not to me. Or sort the data yourself. The address to download it is right here. In all those cases, 9,728, those working in the religion business are making the news for assaults on children at a way outsized rate. On a per capita basis, your child is 674 times more likely to be groped or worse by an ordained cleric than by a transgender person. You want raw numbers? Those in the religion business have committed more than 125 crimes for every one committed by a transgender person. Drag queens? Exactly one out of the 9,728 cases has been a drag queen. One. Is there a political skew? 81 people, more than one a week, who are politicians have made the news for assaulting children. Of those, Republicans outnumber Democrats 58 to 11. And if you throw in the minor parties and nonpartisan electeds, 71% of those making the news for assaulting children have been Republicans. There are some footnotes. This data does not include stings or child sex material cases. And it's not every case because not all cases make the news. And not all that do make the news get picked up in web searches. But the facts speak for themselves. When so-called Christian politicians and religious figures are screeching about 
the danger to children that transgender people and drag queens present, they're ignoring the real problem, which they could see anytime they actually wanted to by looking right in the mirror. Get the data yourself. Check it. Download it. It's free at whoismakingnews.com. And that is what's so pathetic. Those who are the ones promoting, oh, we need to solve this problem. Trans are doing this. Liberals are doing that. It turns out that the folks that you most have to be worried about your children with are those in the religious sect. And Eric says, attack on religion, take uh, that from a lefty point of view. No, sir. The numbers are there to prove what we're saying. The numbers are there to prove what we're saying. The projection continues. Those who continue to claim moral superiority are the ones who turn out to be the ones who can't control themselves. The ones who are perverted. The ones who children must be concerned about. But anyway, folks, we are getting close to the end of the program. I want to thank all of you for being a part of the program today. Thank you uh, for the calls that we received today uh, online. I'd like to have more of you calling in so we can have a discourse. Uh, I, I love the caller uh, and, and where he took the program today. And that is what always happens to our show in the mornings. Uh, you guys add a great flavor to the program. You guys make it more vibrant. So tell more people about the show. Invite more people to come to the show live where they can participate. I mean, the, the, it's having a, a whole lot of folks doing it through podcasts is great, but it's so much more flavorful when we get some folks that are actually talking, listening, and and and, and activating in real time. But anyway, before I go, you know, got to go ahead and do my ask. I want to ask everybody that's here to please consider becoming uh, a, a official PDR Posse member. Several ways to do that. Go ahead and support us by uh, our, our all-encompassing support page is at politicsandright.com slash support, politicsandright.com slash support. You can also reach us. Uh, as you can so Before I go that, I just saw something from Eric Hayes. Eric, did you say that you could possibly get flooded out with all the rain that's coming down and I guess the water coming down from the dam in Conroe. Uh, when you say you are going to be flooded, do you mean your streets or do you mean your home proper? I hope you're not talking about water getting into your home once again. Are you talking about water getting into your home, Eric? And is there anything that we can do to help as far as getting a posse over to help you with sandbags or something? I don't know. You let, you let us know. Um, wow. Uh, oh my God. Oh my God. I, I thought that was over with you as, after these. Oh my God. Sorry to hear that, Eric. Keep me posted and let me know if, if you're going to be, in fact, I'll, I'm going to call you after the show, but anyway, folks, um, let, let's see, you can support the program by going to politicsandright.com slash support politicsandright.com slash support. You can also uh, become a patron by going to politicsandright.com slash patron, politicsandright.com slash patron. Become a patron. You get to read all our books, all five of them, plus all new books free of charge. You can also uh, support us by going and get one or more of our books at politicsandright.com slash books politicsandright.com slash books. And of course, I'm asking all of you who have the wherewithal to support us uh, by going to politicsandright.com, becoming a paid subscriber to our newsletter by going to politicsandright.com slash newsletter, politicsandright.com slash newsletter. Got to get out of here. My name is Egberto Willis. This is Politics and Right. And you guys know how I end this baby. I am what? Out. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to, trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know 
is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.